The Jazz Spotlight, episode 29. Hey Spotlighters, what's up? Yanni Lunga here and welcome, welcome, welcome to this 29th episode of the Jazz Spotlight podcast. Thank you for being with me today. I'm really excited because this is a great episode. There is one of the major experts in the music industry on the podcast, so it's going to be fun and there's going to be plenty of golden nuggets, plenty of tips for you. But before I dive more in depth into today's content, I want to say thank you and give a shout out to a couple of people who have left some reviews on iTunes. So thank you, Jared, and thank you, Nick. I really appreciate you taking a moment of your time to leave a review and ratings on iTunes. So thank you very much, guys. All the best to you. And for all others who are listening, if you would like to help out the podcast and leave ratings and reviews on iTunes, you can type in thejetspotlight.com slash show and you will be redirected to the iTunes page of the podcast. And you know, reviews and ratings are really important because they can help the podcast climb the rankings on iTunes. So if you have enjoyed the podcast and if you want that other people could find the podcast and get value out of it, please go to thejudgepotlet.com slash show and spend one minute to leave a review and rating. I would really appreciate it and I, I will make sure to thank you personally. Episode 29, guys. Episode 29. We're getting closer to 30 already. It's unbelievable, but I'm really happy with what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm happy to have you guys as an audience. I see people on Twitter, especially at Jet Spotlight, engaging, sending questions. I get emails sometimes of people that would like to be guests on the podcast. So it's amazing. Thank you, all of you guys, for your support. So about today, guys. The person I have here is just unbelievable. He has done so many things. He's a digital music pioneer. He's an entrepreneur. He's an author, a best-selling author. He's Dave Cusack, who's on the podcast today to talk about today's music business, his new project, new artist model, and his latest book, Hack the Music Business, Build Your Own Career. Like always, I want to remind you that you can find the links to all the things Dave and I talk about at thejetspotlet.com slash episode 29. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them there uh, below the post or just reach out to me on Twitter at jetspotlet or also to Dave at Dave Cusack and we'll be more than happy to answer them and help you in any way we can. So without further ado, here is... Music Business and the New Artist Model with Dave Kuzak. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. I'm here with a sensational guest today. You know, sometimes there are some guests where it's just so difficult to introduce them. You don't know where to start from because they have achieved so much. And this episode, it's so full with value that you should, whatever you're doing, stop it right now take pen and paper because it's going to be really exciting. The guest I've here today, he's a digital strategist, an entrepreneur, a digital music pioneer. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a founding faculty member at Berkeley Music. He has been featured in, in publications like New York Times, Boston Globe, Wired Magazine. He has been writing, uh, he wrote one of the most important books in the music industry of the latest years called Future of Music, the Manifesto for the Digital Music Revolution. And today he's here to talk about the exciting things he's doing now and his new book that has been released just a few weeks ago called uh, Hack the Music Business. It's with great pleasure that I welcome on the Jet Spotlight podcast, Dave Cusack. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Hi, hi, Yannick. Very good. Thank you for having me uh, on your program. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Let's start right away because Dave is one of the person that if you're on Twitter and you want to know what's happening in the music industry today, he's one of the people that you should really follow at Dave Cusack because he has some great resources to share. He writes quite many articles for important websites like CD Baby, uh, Sonic Beats. And, you know, it's always great tips for not only for musicians, but for people in the music industry in general. And let's start from 
probably one of your latest projects, the new artist model. What can you tell us about that? Well, the new artist model is an online music business school that is uh, really designed to help independent artists with the whole business side of their their enterprise, how to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, how to create a great team, how to create a plan for yourself, uh, a strategy for publishing, for recording and distribution, a strategy for touring, a strategy for merchandise, a uh, strategy for you know, your marketing plan, how to, how to manage your social media, how to raise money from your fans. Uh, it's basically a very, very comprehensive uh, online business program that is targeted to the you know, mu musician entrepreneur of today. Uh, I've taken a lot of my, my background and experience and tried to create something that is uh, very accessible, uh, very practical and very affordable for people. So that's uh, what the new artist model is all about. Mm -hmm. And in connection with the new artist model, which sounds really exciting, and not only, you know, because it's it's a great program, but what I really like about that is that already by reading the description at newartistmodel.com, you can see that it's pretty much for everyone in the music industry. So also producers, managers, songwriters, and I love it. And in connection with that, there is your ebook, Music Business Strategies, where you talk about quite many different different topics. And one of them is the kind of new music business model. Can you tell us a couple of things about that? How has it changed? How is the music business model of today? Well, it's changed uh, dramatically, as as you know. And the the reality of the business these days is that you have to be an entrepreneur. You have to run your musician business as a As a company, you're the CEO of your own company mm -hmm. and that you've got to, you know, mostly from the ground up, build a fan base, build an audience, uh, build relationships with those fans and figure out ways to, you know, connect with people and uh, get them to sponsor your art and your music and your activity. That's really the new business model. Mm -hmm. Uh It's not so much, uh, you know, it is for a few people that you might get signed to a label and, and you might get signed to a publishing deal and you would get some support from those entities. But more likely than not, you need to start out on your own, uh, begin to generate uh, multiple revenue streams uh, directly from your fans, build and, and engage with your fan base uh, and get yourself off the ground before anybody's going to sign you. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the reality of the business. So we, we really teach in all the different modalities that we're, we're working on now. We have videos, we have books, we have eBooks, we have online classes. Uh, it, it's really variations of uh, the same approach of how do we help independent musicians, songwriters, and producers build a business around themselves and take themselves to market. Mm -hmm. I love it. And what is one of the biggest mistakes you think musicians are doing today in this in this model? Obviously, it's not following the model or parts of the models. What do you think it's one of the biggest mistakes that you see you know, online, especially that it's really, you know, affecting uh, musicians and hurting them in a way? Well, there, there are a number of things that I see. I mean, many people are waiting for something to happen as opposed to making something happen. So if you're going to wait for something to happen, then you're going to wait. That's, that's pretty much your destiny. <laughs> uh, you need to make, make something happen. So that's, that's one mistake I, I see over and over again. And I hear people, you know, complain, Oh, I need a manager. I need a label. I need a publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, not true. You need to get it together on your own. And to a certain extent, that's always been true. You know, the, all the artists that we know and love who've been signed to these big labels uh, and publishing deals of the past, they all started out on their own as well. It's, it's a very rare exception where somebody was kind of, you know, plucked from the air before they had already kind of created their own momentum. That's, that's more or less always been true, but today it's even more true because there are far fewer people being signed. Uh, there are far fewer A&R people out there looking. Uh, so you really do need to kind of build a business around yourself and, and um, 
move forward. That that's uh, that's one mistake. And then you know a, a related piece there is you know waiting for someone to come in, uh, you know, sign you or take care of you. That you you uh, you've got to make it happen on your own. Yeah, I I agree with you, Dave. And you know I think it's great that there are people like you that cre- have created something like new artist model. That it's a great way to start understanding how the music industry has changed and is still changing. And also your latest book, Hack the Music Business, which I started to read and has been released only a couple of uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So it's it's a very new book and. In there, I really liked your concept that you already mentioned of musicians as entrepreneur and the cover of the book itself. It, it, it really expressed this concept very well. And I, I agree with that. And I like also the part where you talk about not really maybe doing do it yourself, but the D-I-W-O. So do it with others. So you, you call for collaboration, for networking. Can you, can you elaborate a bit on that, on the D-I-W-O? Yeah, I, I think that do-it-yourself uh, movement uh, is is really a disservice to the musician community because you can't really do it yourself. You've you've got to build a team, and it's a it's a challenge to build a team. So what I always say to people is, first and foremost, you need to understand the business inside and out yourself, mm-hmm. so that you can make the right decisions and you can make the right uh, plans for yourself, even though you may not ultimately do all of the tasks that need to be done, you need to start with a, a very firm understanding of what is the business that you're in and how does it work? How do copyrights work? How do you actually get paid at gigs? Mm-hmm. Um, how can you license your music? How can you leverage your fan relationships to create cash flow for yourself? That's, that's the starting point. Mm-hmm. But the the secret, I believe, to success is attracting people to your dream and inspiring people to help you and support you. Might be a you know business uh, manager, or might be a marketing person, or might be a publishing person that you attract, or a road manager, or even your band mates. Your your job is to attract uh, talented people to kind of come on board with your vision and your dream and support you. And that's what the do it with others is all about. So you've got to, number one, understand the business that you're in so that you can make the right decisions. And then number two, uh, be good enough, talented enough, and inspiring enough that you can attract people to help you achieve your dreams because you can't do it on your own, especially as you grow. If you get you know, beyond a couple of thousand fans – Uh, and you want to tour and you want to write and you want to practice and you want to record, (laughs) distribute and work your social media. I mean, it's just a daunting task, Mm -hmm. but you need to, you need to build a team around yourself if you're going to have any chance of a long-term career in the music industry today. Yeah. uh, Thanks for the great answer, uh, Dave. I, I totally agree with you. And, and it's something that it's also relatively easy to do today or easier than what it was in the past and, and cheaper to uh, network, connect with others. And I really, really agree with you when you say that even though uh, mu- as a musician, one might not end up doing everything, it's good to have a good understanding of uh, how the business works, how social media work, the, some main, uh, some basic uh, knowledge of, for example, web development or like what are the, the latest new features or something like newsletters, for example, that it's a very important feature for websites, but still many artists are ignoring. I totally agree with you. And on episode 27, we talked about different ways musicians can make money with Dave Cool. So something you mentioned, different revenue streams and on your, uh, in your book, that's something you mentioned when you talk about gigs, because gigs, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a revenue stream. And we talked about gigs quite in depth in, uh, on episode 24 with Nicola Milan, when she talked about the, the different kind of gigs. And she talked about something that you also mentioned in your book, that it's the first thing to think when it comes to gigs is why you want to have gigs. And I really like you have a section where you talk about gigs as an opportunity 
to not only like to perform, but also to promote something specific, to drive sales, connect with fans. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? How how can musicians use gigs as, you know, a tool in a way? That's a great question. You know, I think music is fundamentally, you know, a form of uh, communication and expression uh, that when you boil it right down, you know, music is an emotional uh, thing that you, you're conveying your emotions to people and you're trying to connect with people at, on an emotional level. I think that's that's what music is is uh, mostly about, uh, at least the, the, the very interesting parts. Uh, so I think a gig is a, is a natural place to create community. It is community. I mean, you're, you're in a group setting and you've got the stage. So how can you connect with those people, you know, both on an emotional level via your music and your performance, but also how can you learn about them? How can you find out what kind of resonates with them. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you learn from your audience so that you can incorporate that into your, into your music or into your, you know, your business or where you're, where you're headed with your career. So a, a, a gig is a great place uh, to connect with people. And, you know, most people, if they're, if you're running your business as a business, then you're going to have, uh, you know, not only the potential revenue, that you would get from tickets mm -hmm. uh, or from the door, but you also have a merch. Uh, you should have a merch table or merch component to your gig. And that is an opportunity for you to connect with people directly at your merch table, you know, sign a picture, uh, provide some sort of personal attention to people. They will line up to, to meet you and talk to you and shake your hand and tell, tell a story or hear a story. That's your chance to connect. And, You can build community through playing gigs. Just make sure that you don't, you know, you don't treat the gig as, wow, I show up, I sing, I leave. <laughs> that's, that's your chance to really connect with people. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. And, and you mentioned gigs as not like that people, uh, that artists shouldn't think about gigs only as, you know, tickets. And it's something that you talk about in the book as well about. Uh, promoters, the, the, the figure of promoters. So then my question for you, Dave, is this, how, how do you think musicians should approach promoters? What are, what are some tips you might have for musicians who are listening to the podcast? Another great question. Thanks. <laughs> I think today with uh, social media, you can identify where your fans are based on their IP address or based on their zip code. If you collect that kind of data, So if you use an, you know, an email management program like, uh, MailChimp, for example, you can, you can tell where your fans are. And if you can build a profile, uh, on your fans over time that, uh, includes that, uh, geographic data, you can then go to a promoter and say, look, I've got, you know, 608 people on my list that are within 20 miles of your venue. And I will promote the fact that I'm playing these dates or this date to my list and bring people into the venue. If you can go to a promoter with that type of data and that type of confidence that, hey, I can fill the seats because that's really, when you come down to it, mostly what the promoter is interested in. Can you fill the seats? Mm -hmm. Can they sell the tickets? Can they sell their concessions, can they sell their parking, whatever their revenue mix is, they want to make sure that you're going to deliver on that. And, you know, not only are you going to create a great show and entertain the crowd, but you're going to bring, you're going to bring the audience. And there's nothing more powerful than being able to go into a promoter and say, you know, I got it covered. Just give me the date, give me the room. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll bring half the people on my own. Mm -hmm. No, you know, I love your uh, your answer, Dave. I think it's a it's a great tip for the musicians who might be listening to the podcast that if you don't have a newsletter yet, just start one. It's very easy. It's very cheap. You can use tools like MailChimp that they've uh, mentioned or Aweber, for example, is the one I use. You can try it at 
thejetspotlight.com slash Aweber. And this is a very cool strategy that you mentioned that, you know, that you can leverage your fan base to the promoters and say, as Dave said, I have X uh, amount of fans in a 20 miles radius, so I can definitely help in the promotion. I like that. And I think that's some, something that can definitely make you stand out from the crowd because promoters get many requests, but m- not most of the people that send requests are probably just asking to be to get the gigs, but they're not providing something like you would do with what they've said. And another way to stand out from the crowd and to really connect with people is have a good brand branding. Would you happen to have some branding tip for musicians, Dave? What kind of branding tip you have? Well, I think one of the most important things in marketing is differentiation. Mm -hmm. How can you stand out and be different? Now, it's quite often it's very useful to uh, compare yourself when you're early in your career to, you know, other artists or other bands that have influenced you. That gives people a a point of reference prior to hearing your music Mm -hmm. of what you're all about or what you might be about. But ultimately, you need to I mean, this is an age old marketing strategy that you need to own a, a word or a term or a concept in someone's brain. You need to own that term. And the way you do that is to differentiate. How can you be unique in some way or different? You don't want to necessarily be like, you know, I'm sort of like Coldplay meets uh, Dave Matthews. <laughs> that That's not going to do you any good. How can you be different. And that's what you want to think about. Uh, there's no magic bullet here, right? The, mm-hmm. I can't say you do these six things and you come up with your differentiation. You need to understand what you're all about, what you represent, and how you want to convey that to your audience. And the more unique you can be, the more uh, memorable you can be, uh, the better. And one of the great techniques to to do that is to tell a story. You want to tell a story about yourself that conveys your your differentiation and your uniqueness that people can remember and relate to. Uh, everything is always assisted by a story. And, you know, uh, Will Daly is a musician that I recently interviewed, and he, he reminded me, even the Beatles, when the Beatles – you know, were breaking and granted they were brilliant musicians and, you know, the time was different, but people talked about the Beatles haircuts in the beginning of their career. And that was part of the story and and the positioning of that band. Uh, And then later, you know, there were a lot of stories that came from the Beatles, but, you know, there was a story about Paul was dead and people were exploring the record to hear Paul was dead backwards And that was part of a story about the Beatles. And that kind of thing helps you convey your message when you can deliver a story. And that story is about you and how you're unique and how you're different. I love it. And it's a great advice, Dave. Thank you so much for sharing with with us. And I think it's something that you can see already, for example, on, on Twitter, when there is the description of profiles, you can immediately see who is just putting something, kind of the first thing that comes to mind, or who have maybe spent some time to think about a way to to be unique and to have some catchy story or some 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 words, some wordings that really uh, reminds in the heads of people. I really like it. And you are, you are writing on a very regular basis on many music websites and and blogs. But if people would like to learn more about you and find you online, what is the best way to do that? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Dave Kusek, D-A-V-E-K-U-S-E-K. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can also reach me via the new artistmodel.com website. There's a contact uh, form right there. Uh, so those are the two best ways. All right. Dave Kuzek, thank you so much for being on the podcast today, for providing so much value, for telling us a little bit more about the new artist model and for giving out some things from your new book, Hack the Music Business. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Yannick. And, you know, good luck to everybody. Keep going. You're uh, you're your own entrepreneur and, and you're the CEO of your own company and, and keep going. 
Indeed. All right. Thank you. All right. We are back. That was fun, wasn't it, guys? And also plenty of valuable tips. So Dave Kuzek, thank you so much for being on the show and for giving out some advice for musicians and people in the music business. And, you know, I wish you all the best with the new artist model. And for those of you who would like to learn more about Dave, make sure to check out his latest book, Hack the Music Business. It's a great book. I'm almost finished with reading it. It's it's really valuable. And really, no matter what, what position you are in the music industry, whether you are an artist, you are a blogger, you are a producer, you are a manager, an agent, has plenty of valuable tips for for any of us. So I would really recommend you reading it. It's a great book. So thank you, Dave, also for that book that you wrote. It's a, it's a very valuable resource. We mentioned uh, with Dave, we mentioned the newsletter. So I would like to invite you to subscribe to the Jet Spotlight newsletter. If you haven't yet at the jetspotlight.com slash toolbox, you will get some some resources, weekly emails with tips, promotion tips, tools, advice, latest articles, plenty of great value there once a week. So if you would like to learn more about that, you can find out at the jetspotlight.com slash toolbox. And next week, guys, it's going to be episode 30. Really exciting. And what's interesting is that we're going to pull up the curtains and go behind the scenes of a very popular Jets website. Sounds very exciting, doesn't it? Unfortunately, though, you'll have to wait a few days <laughs> until episode 30 is out. This is it for today, guys. And if it, if this is your first episode of the Jet Spotlight podcast and, you know, you just found out about the podcast while you wait for next week's episode, I'd like to invite you to go to the jetspotlight.com slash podcast where you can find all the previous episodes of the podcast with great guests like Jamie Callum, Didi Bridgewater, Dave Holland, Michael Lico, Snarky Puppy, but also experts like Bob Yuzinski, Jerry Goldstein and Steve Pelferman. I'm Yanni Lunga, and this is the Jazz Potlet Podcast. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.